Hey guys, uh, this is GK. So today we have Raj, my very good friend. We both work together. He's going to answer a lot of good questions on cloud. I'm going to ask him some important questions and most frequently asked questions. And I hope you all will learn something out of this video. So with that, uh, welcome Raj. And why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, GK. It's a pleasure uh, to be in your channel. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Raj. I'm currently a senior specialist solutions architect at AWS. I cover container and serverless. Uh, before that, I was an enterprise solutions architect at AWS. Uh, prior to joining AWS, I was a distinguished cloud engineer at Verizon, and that's where I used to work with GK. I'm also a published instructor, public speaker, and a mentor. I also run a separate YouTube channel named uh, Cloud with Raj. Uh, super happy to be here and answer some of the questions. Yeah, so I'm going to put the link of Raj's YouTube channel here in the description so you guys can look at his videos. He covers a lot of AWS stuff and then uh, some work-related stuff as well, which will be important if you are planning to go to AWS. So with that, I'm going to go to the first question. So Raj, uh, SA at AWS is a very good job. I mean, a lot of people dream to work at AWS, right? especially as SA. So what are the three main responsibilities um, that like you can explain in the in your role so generally my day to day my three main responsibilities are number one is um, i have to chat with the management and c level executives of the company so let's say i'm working with a big customer i'll meet with their senior director or cto and we have to understand uh, the strategy of cloud migration uh, for example some companies just want to move everything as is so we call it lift and shift, right? Some companies want to modernize a little bit, maybe change uh, their database from Oracle to Aurora something and then migrate. Some companies want to do total modernization and then migrate to AWS. Uh, for example, they want to move everything to container or serverless. After we do that, uh, then uh, the second responsibility is I talk to the actual uh, project team. So I'll talk to the actual application team, their architect or their manager, lead developer, and understand the design. So they will give me their existing design that's running on the data center. And then uh, my responsibility is based on the strategy defined by the higher management, come back with a design that could be run on AWS. And uh, as part of that, I'll also give them little proof of concepts. So I'll demo uh, services that they're interested in, uh, some of the case studies of similar companies that have gone through this similar kind of journey. And then which brings me to the third responsibility. Uh, even though a lot of a lot of our channel viewers are very educated and very pro in cloud, but cloud is still new. If you think about it, uh, maybe only 20 to 30 percent of the projects have migrated to cloud. So a lot of the concepts are new, especially uh, Kubernetes, serverless, uh, NoSQL database. It moves so fast; it's difficult to keep up. Uh, so as part of my third responsibility, I have to educate uh, the engineers and all the developers in the customer team. Uh, so I will run different kinds of things such as workshops, uh, presentations, uh, immersion days, hackathon, uh, etc., uh, to mm -hmm. educate uh, the folks about the services, uh, do some hands-on stuff uh, so that uh, they're well aware of how the technology works. So yeah, those are the three main responsibilities that I do day to day at GK. Yeah, that's awesome, Raj. And uh, I think you are pretty much, you have a pretty uh, tight schedule your day-to-day -day activities so I mean, uh, yeah i mean yes, it's fun it. like uh, so one thing is uh, people think that uh, uh, if you work in aws uh, your work-life balance could be a little off but that's not really true maybe it's different uh, from team to team uh, but right. uh, yeah like uh, we get plenty of time to study ourselves and then go apply it uh, so we, we focus highly on learn and be curious uh, so we, we want folks to study up and then uh, teach other people because that's very necessary. Yep. So on that same topic, right? So what are some of the real world, you know, challenges that you face in a system design whenever you are doing for a client, uh, you know, who's going to come to AWS? That's a good question because, you know, a lot of the stuff which is in theory, when you actually apply it uh, in the field, uh, there is some added challenges. Uh, so I'll give a very, very common example. Let's say scalability. So one of the very common scenario is uh, how to make your application scalable for a big traffic day. Uh, so in average, in theory, the answer is put the virtual machines in auto scaling group and use a load balancer. 
but this is not good enough if your application traffic goes up uh, too fast uh, so the application load balancer and the virtual machines and the auto scaling group won't be able to keep up with the burst of traffic so in those cases you need to pre-warm your load balancer to accept the high increase of traffic also you should utilize a scheduled scaling in your auto scaling group if you know a big event is coming also ensure that the ec2 amis are lightweight because the more libraries and unnecessary stuff you bake into your amis the longer it is going to take to provision new ec2s also use a database proxy in between so when the application is to scale very fast the database will create a lot of connections and terminate connections and then there will be a lot of orphan connections uh, putting unnecessary stress on the database so using a database proxy such as RDS proxy in between your application code and the database helps you manage all the database connections. Also, so this part you only know if you actually worked in a real world project, you should run IEM or infrastructure event management before a big event happens to ensure that it can handle high traffic. So IEM is an event that your AWS account team runs uh, with your application it kind of simulates the high traffic uh, for a specified number of uh, hours and then it checks if the application is holding up if not uh, you can tweak certain things uh, also beyond that uh, talk about breaking the application into microservices uh, also a common misconception out there is if you go to kubernetes or serverless all the scaling challenges goes away uh, which is not true uh, even in Kubernetes, you might need to utilize uh, over provisioner in serverless, provisioned capacity, as well as multiple other things. Another area where it differs a lot between theory and in real world is the cost optimization. Uh, so it is challenging to cost optimize the applications. And generally, if you only work on uh, playground projects or proof of concepts, you do not care about cost that much. Uh, so for cost, you should use CloudWatch Insights. You can use AWS Compute Optimizer, which identifies uh, what kind of EC2s or how much memory you should allocate to Lambdas. Uh, you can use AWS Pod Instances in your test environment. You can use AWS Cost Explorer to analyze your charges and the predicted charges. Also, if you are into Kubernetes, you can use KubeCost uh, or you can use Cloud Health by VMware. Uh, for a lot of cost optimization recommendations. Thank you for that, Raj. And then the next question, I know it's very tough to answer because you're not supposed to answer the exact questions. Right. But uh, for the sake of the audience uh, who are applying for this position as an SA in AWS, so what are some of the technical interview questions like you might have faced and how to answer them? Yeah, so this is, this is a tricky and uh, broad question. Uh, so one, one tip is without going too much into the specifics, right? I'll, I'll give an example. When it comes to uh, AWS, uh, we always ask what area the candidate is uh, comfortable in, right? So any good interviewer, and I'm sure GK does it too when he interviews people for his company, uh, they only ask uh, about deep questions when the candidate says they know about it, right? So if candidate doesn't say they know something about it, there's no point asking deep questions on it. Yeah. On that note, a couple of examples could be, uh, how can you do disaster recovery? And then everyone mm -hmm. kind of says like, okay, we're just gonna spin up another database. We're gonna replicate everything, but think a little bit deeper because uh, this is a very common question. And there are multiple strategies of disaster recovery. Um, there could be pilot light, there could be backup and restore, uh, depending on the RTO and RPO of that uh, application. Uh, so an ideal answer could be you explain a little bit about the RTO, R RPO, and then the four different uh, di uh, disaster recovery strategies in super high level. And then you can go deeper in one level. Uh, so I'm going to give a okay. link to that where you can uh, study that. Similarly, uh, for Kubernetes, if you say you know Kubernetes, you could expect questions like, hey, what is a horizontal pod autoscaler? Uh, versus what is a cluster autoscaler. Mm -hmm. uh, security is a big thing for Kubernetes because Kubernetes is open source. Uh, so make sure uh, you study uh, security best practices uh, for Kubernetes. And also another thing uh, that personally helped me a lot is um, memorize the service definition. Like if someone says, hey, 
what is cloud formation or what is a lambda or what is kubernetes mm -hmm. just memorize the first line that what the thing is you get it out and then you can explain in your own words uh, that kind of reduces a little bit of the difficulty of explaining stuff like I get this question a lot, like what is a Lambda? I will say like Lambda is a, a compute service that lets you run your code without provisioning uh, any service, whether virtual or physical. And then I'll go ahead and explain it. Uh, so that, I think that tip really helped me in my own interviews. Uh, so yeah, those are some of the things to take, keep in mind for uh, technical interview questions. Yeah, I think because uh, since you know the definition properly, mm -hmm. it will give you the confidence as well. You don't have to think through like what is serverless function or what is exactly Lambda and all that stuff. If you think then you will lose the track and then, you know, it will be tricky to answer because they also, I guess they'll also look at the key, right keywords when you're answering the services questions, right? Yeah, they obviously uh, look for the actual core things. Like we say, like on your, uh, on your uh, biggest day, you fall back to your highest level of preparation, right? <laughs> so yeah. as long as you have the some stuff memorized and then you can add on to that. So I agree on that, yeah. Great. Um, so how can someone get a SA job uh, at AWS? Yeah, so I get this question a lot, actually. Uh, so the mm -hmm. first thing I would say is uh, if you are just coming into cloud and DevOps, you're just starting out, uh, it's probably yeah. better that uh, you get some experience in other companies. So I'll give my example, right? So I started, when I started my cloud DevOps journey in Horizon, I was working with GK and then I got a lot of experience and that kind of prepares you to go into AWS next. Second thing is when you are ready to give interview at AWS, study the STAR method. Uh, so some, knowing the answer is not enough and, it, and Amazon kind of says this very openly that all the answers, they expect it in the STAR method. For good or bad, that's how it is. Uh, so the STAR right. stands for uh, situation, task, action, and result. So you, you, have to, you have to formulate your answer that way. So practice those. I'll give a link actually to one of the article that, that we say and one of the video that I have done. You can take a look. And then, okay. and then like one thing I did is interview at other places, like before you go interview at AWS, because you will always be nervous, especially if you're interviewing after a long time, you haven't interviewed. So maybe interview at some of the other companies and see how you are doing, note down the questions that you are failing at, right? Yeah. And then when you are ready, uh, go try at AWS. I mean, on that note, we are hiring, we need a lot of people. So some of you who think you are ready, so I'll give a link to all the open jobs. So feel free to take a look and apply. So that's great. So uh, I think it's, they can directly look look from the AWS website as well, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All the positions are open. There is nothing uh, secret about right. it. Uh, and yeah, if they have the, any questions on a specific role and stuff, they can ping me. They can always well. reach out to you. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, what is the most valuable technology trend you know, that you see in the real world? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is really interesting because I think uh, GK, uh, you have also seen this. Um, this thing like changes like crazy, right? Because um, yeah. when we started our projects, you know EC2, uh, if you know uh, Jenkins and maybe CloudFormation, it, yeah. that, that's the thing, you are the king of the world. Uh, so now the things are shifting. So Kubernetes is definitely the hottest trend because uh, I handle Kubernetes like container yeah. and uh, serverless. Everyone wants to move to Kubernetes, even though Kubernetes doesn't always fit everywhere. Some use cases right. are not super uh, ideal for Kubernetes, but customers want it uh, because it is so valuable in the job market. Everyone wants to learn it. Everyone wants to implement it. And then uh, on the DevOps side of part, how to deploy to Kubernetes. And in that part also, I see a shift happening. So previously everything was being done through DevOps, CI and CD. But now right. I see the CD part being taken over by the GitOps, right? So right. GitOps is Git as the single- the Argo language. CD and all that stuff. Argo CD, Flux, et cetera, exactly. Yeah. Um, serverless, on the serverless side, I'm seeing even Driven is getting a lot of popularity. Okay. Uh, so even Driven is, uh, let's say system A, needs to send some messages to system B. So there will be some sort of queue in between such as uh, SQS or Amazon NQ or even bridge uh, because they can scale infinitely. So I'm seeing those patterns are becoming very, very popular. Another thing, uh, our CTO, Warner Vogel, uh, so he kind of predicts, like he's the CTO of Amazon, he's super knowledgeable guy, and he kind of predicts the uh, uh, trends and I follow that. 
So he's mm -hmm. saying that uh, the next thing would be uh, low code and IoT. Finding developers is super hard right now. So if, yeah. if you notice uh, GK, a lot of the services are trying to go through low code where people can drag and drop and that would generate, right. uh, for example, step function. Right. Uh, similarly, IoT, uh, one of Vogel things, it will get more integrated into our, our smart cars, electric vehicles, and even in the senior facilities, like uh, where the elder facilities, they could use these voice control things, touch control things even more. Uh, for programming languages, um, I kind of see Python is becoming like super huge right now. Mm. You learn Python and you can apply it in all kinds of stuff like DevOps, right? Um, right. Machine learning, backend, and now even the front end using Flux and Express. Uh, yeah, right. so those are some of the big technology trends that I'm seeing in the real world. Yeah, thank you so much, Rajan. I think now uh, we have covered a lot of questions and there might be still a lot of questions that people might be asking. Um, so I guess, can you give some links of yours where they can reach out to you? I'm, I'm sure I'm going to put them in the description, but what are the different ways that they can reach out to you and reach out to you and ask uh, these questions? Yeah, so I have a separate YouTube channel where I go over some of these concepts um, as well as some interview tips and tricks. Uh, so check, check me out there. Uh, you can always connect me on LinkedIn, right? And then uh, of course I have my own Instagram. Uh, not as popular as GK's Instagram, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, any of those things, uh, yeah, I'm sure GK will put them on the description. Thank you so much, Raj, for spending some time uh, with my family, especially. And uh, with that, thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I hope uh, this video was super helpful to you all. If you have any comments or questions, you know, feel free to comment here so that Raj can also answer here and do follow his channel and as well as reach out to him so that he can help you out with any other questions that we haven't addressed here. Thank you again. Take care. Bye.